Hi, Founder fans. Jason here, and today's founder is Alexander McDougall. Now, Alexander McDougall had a huge role in the American founding, though he's often forgot today. I usually like to compare him, though it's not the best comparison, to New York City's John Hancock. And the reason mainly for this is he becomes an extremely important leader early in the war, but he was also, as a history, as a merchant captain. Though I should say, he really made a name for himself, and let's take a look at him. This guy, Alexander McDougall, really made a name for himself during the French and Indian War when he served as a privateer. Uh, after that, he did such a good job winning prizes that he was able to open up a successful merchant firm. Now, much like John Hancock in Boston and many other merchant uh, ship owners around the colonies, he was upset by several of the acts going on uh, early in the we'll say grievances era with Great Britain. However, he really becomes upset after New York, the New York Colonial Assembly disobeys the Quartering Act and says, well, we're just going to ignore it and not get, find any place for the troops to live. And then the royal governor dissolved the New York government. And that's really when Alexander McDougal joins the fray. He was already wealthy and a leader in the city, but he writes a book titled To the Betra I'm sorry, a pamphlet titled To the Betrayed Inhabitants of the City and Colony of New York. And this was a scathing assessment of everything that was going on. Now, he published this anonymously, and the publication helped to spark the Battle of Golden Hill, which took place in New York City a few months before the Boston Massacre, and in many fashions could be considered the first violence of the American Revolution. Now, although he published it anonymously, eventually people find out that McDougal is the one who published this, and he actually spent several months in jail for having published this. When he gets out, well, he's been pretty radicalized, and he joins the Sons of Liberty and becomes a leader of the Son of Sons of Liberty. He also becomes a member of the Committee of Correspondence in New York City, and when the First Continental Congress issues their boycott on any English inbound goods from Great Britain, he is one of the main people enforcing that and preventing ships from unloading tea in New York Harbor. Now, when the war breaks out in Lexington and Concord, almost immediately, McDougal is appointed as an officer. He's a colonel in the war uh, at first. Now, over the course of the war, McDougal makes his way up all the way through the ranks to Major General. And during this time, he mostly spends his time in the Hudson River uh, with uh, Major General William Heath. There's not a lot of fighting there, but they spend this time essentially watching over British-held New York City and fighting in the the the, the middleman. Uh, I forget the the terminology. The the unclaimed zone around New York City. There's a lot of hostilities there. Eventually, uh, he actually gets appointed as. Uh, the commander in charge of West Point. He takes over for Benedict Arnold when Benedict Arnold does uh, the worst possible job uh, manning West Point, and his treason was, of course, trying to hand over West Point to the British. Either way, McDougal takes over there. He's actually selected to go to the Continental Congress by New York, but when he arrives, he's there about a month before he resigns because he's asked to take over as Secretary of the Marine, which is what we would consider today basically Secretary of the Navy, an extremely important part of administering the war at the time. Now, he ends up going back and forth to the uh, Continental Army during this time, and at one point, he is actually sent by the Continental Army at the end of the war. After, New York, after the Americans win, and the army goes with George Washington up to Newburgh, New York, and they're just kind of waiting for the British to leave New York City, well, that's when the Newburgh Conspiracy happens. And in an extremely short summation, uh, the officers and generals in charge of the Continental Army, now that the war was over, was not exactly thrilled what was happening down in Philadelphia with these not-soldiers, these doctors and lawyers and merchants who weren't fighting in the war. They were not happy, and they chose Alexander McDougall as their messenger to go list their grievances to Congress in Philadelphia, and he does. And and McDougal had, at this point, served most of the war in the Army, but also, as Secretary of the Marine, had experience in Congress with these same people. So he was a great messenger. He went and he listed their grievances. Unfortunately, and I will note, McDougal saw the predicament that Philadelphia was in. One of the main arguments or grievances listed by the generals was, can you pay us, please? We've not been paid for several years now. We've been cool about it, but now that the war's over, can you pay us? And uh, Continental Congress was like, with what money? <laughs> and um, Alexander McDougal sympathized with both parties. Now, this ends with the Newburgh conspiracy. Uh, eventually, unfortunately, the grievances that 
McDougal brought to Congress went unanswered for quite a bit, and uh, George Washington had to step in and let cooler heads prevail in a very famous story. Uh, after this, McDougal, you know, the war ends, he goes back to New York, where he's already a very wealthy man, and he's actually chosen as one of the earliest presidents of the Bank of New York. Now, the Bank of New York, we now know today as BNY Mellon. It is still around, and it's one of the first banks, and McDougal was one of the president of the bank when it, uh, before it would later go on to offer the United States its first loan. Now, I say before because, unfortunately, between the end of the Revolutionary War and the signing of the U.S. Constitution, Alexander McDougall passes away, and he is not able to help with the creation of the United States. Again, uh, relating him quite a bit to John Hancock, who, although he survived through the creation of the United States, served mostly at the state level after his big early war Sons of Liberty stint. Uh, and so that is a, an extremely brief overview of the life of Alexander McDougall, an American founder who is simply overlooked despite the gigantic role, which I just assessed for you in way too short a period of time. But I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, definitely hit like. And if you're new here, hit subscribe. I put out videos all week long, including tomorrow, where I will be doing my weekly wrap-up of the seven articles published on founderoftheday.com in the past week. I hope you join us, and I look forward to seeing you there.